Um, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for um, being here. Um, I'd like to uh, especially thank um, the Regional Minister for External Action and uh, European Affairs, uh, Councillor um, Merichel Charret. Thank you very much. Um, it's, uh, and also my colleagues from the Bertelsmann Stiftung in Germany, uh, Dr. Malte Zabel and Nathan Christ. It's an honor to have you here to present this interesting um, report, study, which you all have outside. And without further ado, I'd like to, since this is a very compact um, um, conference, I'd like to give the floor to Jacinta Jordana, uh, director of VBA and co-organizer also of this event. Jacinta, you have the floor. We are organizing uh, jointly uh, with uh, Fundación Bertelsmann, Stiftung Bertelsmann and, and eBay here uh, at the UPF campus. And in the name of uh, these institutions, also the uh, UPF, who is hosting us, I must uh, welcome you uh, to, this, uh, to this event. Uh, just to say that this is a very, uh, this is a very, uh, a very interesting uh, uh, issue. I think that the uh, transitions, the, the green transition and the uh, digital transition in Europe are key for the future of Europe and the role of regions is also very important and this study will allow us, us to go in depth in understanding the, the nature of the challenges that we are going to, to cope in the, in the coming years. So I, uh, for this reason we were very interested to organize this, uh, this event and to start a discussion on this uh, topic and we are also very thank you, thankful to the uh, Bertelsmann uh, Foundation and the Stiftung Bertelsmann uh, for, uh, for giving us the opportunity to share with them uh, this uh, initiative. So, thank you very much for coming and, uh, well, I think that is now the, the turn of the... Uh, we can, um, perfect. Um, yeah. We can okay. give the floor to... Um, thank you, Jacin. We've told them to be very short. That's why <laughs> they are under pressure. Um, I would like to give the floor now to uh, Clara Basols, the director of the Fundación Bertelsmann here in Barcelona. Clara. Good afternoon to all of you, dear Minister Serret, dear representatives and dear all. It is a pleasure to welcome you also again here Thank you very much to the eBay and the Universidad Pompeu Fabra for hosting us in this beautiful location. Thanks for the support of the representation of the European Commission in the organization of this event, and especially to our colleagues from Bertelsmann Stiftung who are going to present this study. Well, the green and digital transition is one of the top priorities of the European Union. It is also on the agenda of the Spanish Presidency of the Council, and it is in the priority of the Catalan government, being uh, this region, Catalonia, the leading region in the development of digital technologies. So I think it is very timely to present this study here in Barcelona. In this study, 288 regions are analyzed through the relation to 42 technologies and there are made some recommendations about cooperation opportunities between the regions. On one side, in order to accelerate the transition, and on the other, to increase the social coherence in Europe. Well, my colleagues uh, Nathan and Malte are going to present the study, but I would like to outline one aspect because it links very well with the work of the Spanish Fundación Bertelsmann, which is centered in career guidance in the schools and dual vocational training. Well, the, in the report, it says that it is necessary to improve the education and research infrastructure and to engage in educational reforms for the regions to be able to develop the full potential. And also some specific areas are pointed out in which a large number of qualified professionals will be needed. 
in Spain as well as in the rest of Europe, there is a lack of professionals in this sector, in the green and digital sector. And just to put a, an example, in the year 2022, in Spain, at least 120,000 uh, jobs or vacancies relating to digital, uh, to digital technologies remained vacant because no qualified professionals could be found. This in a country with 28% of youth unemployment. This means that we have a very great potential of improvement. And probably the first thing that should be done is a really good career guidance in the schools involving very strongly the, the companies and the market to make sure that the teenagers are made aware of the many and good opportunities of jobs that are awaiting them in these sectors. At the same time, we need to qualify a large number of professionals because if we don't have the professionals, we will not be able to make this transition at the speed we want. And probably dual vocational training is the fastest and most efficient way to achieve this because in this way of learning, the students learn at two places, at two learning places in alternance in a vocational school and in a company where they use the latest technology and they experience the innovation the companies are going through. So I would like to recommend strongly the companies that are involved in these new technologies to get engaged deeply in career guidance in school and also train in dual vocational training. With this, I finish and I look forward to the interesting discussions. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Clara. Very important message. Um, we move on and we'd like to give the floor to uh, Manuel Sapiro, Director of the um, Commission Representation here in Barcelona. Hi, Manuel. Honorable Consellera, uh, Vice Rector, Estimada Clara, Estimada Jacin, Estimada Vincent, Gracias por convidarme hoy aquí. I'll switch to English since everyone is talking in English here. Uh, Europe's man on the moon moment is how the president of my institution, the European Commission, President von der Leyen, described the adoption of a European Green Deal only 10 days after the College of Commissioners came to office. It seems decades away, but it was only four years ago, and it was the beginning of an accelerated journey in the twin transition towards a more sustainable and digital Europe. Since then, we've had COVID, we've had an unprecedented recovery plan, We've had the war of aggression in Ukraine, uh, now also in Israel. So we were bound to end this age of innocence, inverted commas, in which we were living and strived to achieve a more resilient and assertive Europe. And to do this, we started by making an inventory at European Commission level of our so-called strategic capabilities which are at the roots of this resilience, enhancing our capabilities and reducing our vulnerabilities. And we did this as part of both our foresight and industrial policy agenda. This is what has been done too with this report, uh, and very thoroughly so, I must say, mapping out technological capabilities at regional level with what Klaas just mentioned as the um, 58 regions and 42 technologies, um, but also proposing to us, policymakers, paths for actions with a focus on interregional cooperation. Resilience is ultimately not only about competitiveness and security of supply, however important they may be, uh, it is also, and in a very distinctive European way, I would say, about cohesion and fairness. 
On the investment and competitive front, we've estimated that we need at least 650 billion euros per year of investment in order to uh, have a twin transition. And on the social front, another of the strong uh, ideas of our shared vision is that the twin transition cannot leave anyone or anywhere behind. That means being more attentive than ever to social and economic cohesion and reducing territorial and other disparities. This report, this study on technological capabilities underpins each and every one of these aspects of resilience. So the man on the moon moment that I was referring to before means, of course, doing whatever it takes to boost our technological competitiveness, but it also means preserving and improving the health of our planet and the well-being of our people. So at the end of the day, it's more a man on the earth moment that we're dealing with than the man on the moon moment. And as was mentioned by the president of the European Commission herself, in the state of the union, we cannot do this without a Europe of the regions. As I was commenting, I think, to Clara and Vincent some uh, days ago, we will diffuse this study widely at political level within the relevant cabinets. I will not bore you with the name of uh, competent commissioners, but it does one thing which is very special and relevant to us, which is to give strong evidence of the need to unlock the huge untapped potential for collaboration between European regions and in a very scientific manner. It can be used to step up our work in the framework of smart specialization strategies and cohesion policy at large. It also shows that such initiatives that step to streamline and create synergies between existing funding programs uh, and public-private partnerships could and should also benefit all our regions. As set in the study, and I'll conclude with this, Catalonia is a traditional innovative front runner as you know, this year in our commission ranking, it was labeled a strong innovator. Uh, it has a track record also of regional cooperation. The Consejera is better placed than I am to tell you the merits of this regional cooperation, but it is well known both here and in Brussels that uh, Catalonia presides over the Pyrenees Mediterranean region, that is the driver of the four motors and that also, as you know, it's leading innovation valleys such as the hydrogen valleys. And we're trying to help as much as we can from the European Commission representation in all those endeavors. We, Commission and Catalonia, have a shared interest and responsibility in engaging the less developed region in this. So I thank you for this organization, the organization of this event, and I very much look forward to our discussions on the synergies and the collaborative uh, pathways that we can find. Thank you. Um, many thanks, Manuel, for your thought-provoking um, speech. Uh, and now I'd like to give the floor to um, um, the Honorable Consellera d'Acció Exterior um, in Europea, um, Council of Regional Minister for External Action, uh, Meritxell Ferret. Thank you. Molt bona tarda. Vicerrector Jordana, un plaer enorme saludar-lo i tornar a ser aquí. Um, director de la Comissió Europea, benvolgut amic, directora de la Fundació Veterans aquí a uh, aquest país i també al uh, codirector, uh, co-director. Nice to meet you here today, uh, amics i amigues. Um, començarem en anglès i després canviar el català. Farem un max mix. Però sobretot, i eh, um, arrenco, on behalf of the government of Catalonia, um, I would like first of all to thank the Bertelsmann Foundation for choosing Barcelona 
to discuss about the findings of this remarkable study that we are all willing to discover all the, the results. And of course, our government is proud to welcome you here. And uh, please feel always that we are on your side uh, in everything you do here in, in Catalonia. We want to keep this good cooperation and the support uh, to, your, to your work. Uh, let me thank then in particular to Clara Basols, the director of the Foundation Bertelsmann here today in Barcelona, uh, dear Jacin Jordana also, the director <laughs> of the Git Bay, and also the, the good friend Manuel Safiro, the director of the representation of the European Commission here in Barcelona. And also a very warm welcome to Dr. Uh, Malte Zabel and Nathan Christ, our guest from the Bertelsmann Foundation in Germany, who will be presenting today the main conclusions or of this, uh, this study. Uh, we largely appreciate the type of research that you will be presenting here today, and uh, because we are sure that it will give us tools and resources to deliver even better informed decisions and better serve our society, which is, in the end, our main aim, our main goal. Um, the FED, com the principal motor De, del Govern de la Generalitat, del Departament que tinc l'honor d'encapçalar, és el de ser útils a la ciutadania. És el de servir el millor, de la millor manera possible eh, al conjunt de la ciutadania. Tothom, eh, com dèiem, que ningú quedi mai enrere. I per això a Catalunya volem ser capdavanters en el desenvolupament d'aquestes tecnologies verdes i digitals. Tenim una llarga tradició no, d'intentar impulsar al màxim el dinamisme i volem destacar en temes com el que sortiran al llarg d'aquestes jornades, com és ara la impressió en 3D. Um, volem, en aquest sentit, eh, ser un agent, un actor que impulsi de manera efectiva aquestes dues transicions, la transició verda i digital, i fent-ho eh, treballant de manera eficaç, rigorosa, eh, insistim en aquest principi d'utilitat, i fer-ho amb aquesta visió àmplia de que busquem el benestar i la prosperitat de la nostra ciutadania, de la ciutadania d'aquí de Catalunya, però també dels nostres veïns, dels nostres socis, de tots aquests a companys de viatge que trobem en el projecte europeu i, si em permeteu, també més enllà de les pròpies fronteres europees o amb el veïnatge mediterrani, que també eh, ens sentim plenament sempre implicats, perquè tenim clar que tenim el futur compartit. Per tant, tenim una feina i una vocació de guanyar aquesta utilitat i fer-ho eh, des de la proximitat, amb la transversalitat i treballant en aquests principis de, gover de governança multinivell perquè ens ho creiem i perquè tenim clar que és el millor per acompanyar la ciutadania, treballant entre governs de diferents nivells no? i apropant-nos al màxim al món local, institucions, societat civil, fent aquesta aliança i fent que aquesta governança multinivell eh, reforci encara més el projecte de la Unió Europea. Perquè, eh, com dèiem, eh, governar bé no és només a vegades qüestió de números o resultats, sinó és de l'impacte que té en la societat, en el benestar de la ciutadania. I sobretot avui en dia, i en feia esment la, la directora, en el jovent, en les generacions joves que necessitem que tinguin i continuïn tenint aquesta perspectiva d'ascensor social, d'igualtat d'oportunitats, de poder desenvolupar el seu projecte professional i de vida, com dèiem, arreu i amb les mateixes condicions sense que ningú quedi enrere en lloc d'Europa. I si pot ser en lloc del món, posats a ser ambiciosos. Per això, per tant, creiem que és imprescindible aquesta cooperació entre territoris, com la que tenim, per exemple, Catalunya històricament amb Baden-Württemberg i que també es plasmi a través dels quatre motors amb, amb a, les regions també de Llombardia i Albernia Ronalps i que tenim aquest compromís de contribuir als reptes globals a través d'aquestes respostes compartides, unint esforços i escalant les propostes que puguem identificar a nivell local. I això mateix també ho traslladem amb aquesta participació en més de 200 xarxes europees i que, com deia abans, volen ser una aposta per fer encara més fort el projecte europeu i aquest projecte també euromediterrani. 
posant sempre les persones al centre i entenent que la doble transició verda i digital és una prioritat pel nostre país, però és també una prioritat a nivell europeu, com bé ens recordàvem, amb aquestes sobiranies energètica i digital que amb els diferents esdeveniments dels últims anys se'ns ha fet més evident que mai que necessitem reforçar. A nivell de Catalunya ens posem, per exemple, en aquesta carrera europea per avançar en el que és la transició digital, la sobirania digital a través de les apostes pels semiconductors. Tenim el potencial per ser un clar pol de desenvolupament de la indústria dels semiconductors al sud d'Europa. Comptem amb un entorn dinàmic, amb aquests ecosistemes de recerca i d'innovació que ens afavoreixen instal·lacions com el Super Computing Center, però també tot aquest ecosistema actiu de start-ups i d'empreses consolidades en noves tecnologies, que no només ens projecten i ens permeten impulsar projectes i escalar-los, sinó que també ens ajuden a treure empreses i inversions, com ha sigut el cas de Cisco aquí a Barcelona. Catalunya... Estem intentant fer al màxim els deures, no només en digital, sinó també en el que és la necessària sobirania i transició energètica. Tenim aquesta aposta ferma amb la implantació de les energies eòlica, fotovoltaica i també a contribuir en aquesta aposta per l'hidrogen verd. Acompanyem aquesta gran infraestructura que ha de ser l'AC 2 Med i al voltant d'aquesta gran gasoducte submarí que ha de connectar Barcelona i Marsella, impulsem tot un ecosistema també per convertir Catalunya en el hub de l'hidrogen verd al sud d'Europa, impulsant-ho, com bé recordàvem, el projecte del vall de l'hidrogen verd que enllaça Catalunya i també Aragó, Navarra i fins al País Basc. De fet, també fa pocs dies, i com dèiem, això no ho volem fer sols, sinó connectant amb els nostres socis, ho podíem comentar també aquesta aposta conjunta pel hidrogen verd amb el president, amb el ministre president de Baden-Württemberg, per com fem aquesta cooperació i aquesta escala europea. I, per tant, posant també Catalunya en aquest paper central, ambiciós, de contribució ferma a la transició i a la sobirania energètica europea. I ho diem sempre, per acompanyar i en fèiem també esment, la directora Clara, per acompanyar aquestes cadenes de valor, per acompanyar aquesta oportunitat de crear llocs de treball i fent-ho també com a govern amb aquesta transversalitat a través de totes les polítiques sobre les quals impulsem i contribuïm al benestar de la nostra societat, siguin polítiques educatives, siguin de foment d'innovació i recerca, siguin de foment i suport al teixit productiu i empresarial. So to end, uh, let me thank you again for, for the study that you are about to present. We are committed as government, as society, to help building a better future, not only for Catalonia, but for all Europe, for all our colleagues throughout Europe. And uh, this commitment, we are certain that we share with you all, and we encourage you to keep up with this such an extraordinary work. Thank you very much. Moltes gràcies i molt bona jornada. Moltes gràcies, consellera. I'd like to give the floor now to Dr. Malte Zabel, who will now focus on the subject of this today's presentation. Thank you, Shin. Madam Secretary, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. And I just learned that it is good afternoon and not good evening, as I would actually say in Germany at this hour, at this point in time. It might bore you, but I will also start with a big thank you, which goes to Jacint and Ebay and to Clara from the uh, Fundación Bertelsmann for having us and for giving us the opportunity to share some of our work with you here today and to have it discussed with this audience and so distinguished speakers. So thank you for that. So why, for God's sake, is a German NPO or a German private foundation engaged in digital and green technologies in Spain, you may ask. And, well, to be honest and to be fair, the starting point for our work is actually not Spain or Catalonia, it is Europe. And to be more precise, it is actually the issue of European cohesion, which matters a lot to us as Battlesman Foundation as we have a strong European mindset. And 
Um, actually, I think that we do not even need to talk about all these things which are currently at the top of the European agenda, like open strategic autonomy, enlargement, institutional reforms, managing migration, you name it, without the necessary degree of internal cohesion and unity, right? So we think that this is actually the sine qua non conditio for a strong and capable European Union. So, Again, fair enough, you may say, but again, why then tech in Spain, huh? And uh, again, I come back to the EU for this, um, because one of the biggest challenges for Europe's unity and its socio-economic cohesion is actually the twin transition, right? I mean, we all want the EU to succeed in its twin transition. We all want that the EU gets the Green Deal right and becomes carbon neutral as soon as possible and that it gets better in digitizing its economy, right? Um, but these, decarbonization and digitalization, are actually huge economic transformation challenges. And it lies in the nature of things that not all regions are equally prepared for this, right? And it is obviously the rather economically weak regions, some rural regions, also some heavy industry regions with strong CO2 emissions, who might suffer and who might lose out in the future. And this implies a big risk that the EU is economically, socioeconomically drifting apart even further. However, this is still quite a big picture, and therefore we actually wanted to know better and we wanted to be more precise. And that is why we actually took a closer look and analyzed the tech profiles for green and digital future technologies for all of those 288 NUTS2 regions by analyzing vast amounts of patent data, I can assure you. Um, so we wanted to find out who exactly has what potential and uh, when it comes to mastering the twin transition. And we also wanted to know who could actually cooperate with whom, because more interregional cooperation is actually quite an underexploited opportunity, although it could offer sort of a sweet spot where you could align the goal of a successful twin transition uh, with the claim of European cohesion, which is enshrined in the European treaties. And this is one of the study's main messages, actually. Um, and in this respect, I must say that Spain and Catalonia are actually very exciting and fascinating regions. And, um, but I think I leave it with this. I think that's enough of a preface. I now hand over to my colleague, Nathan Christ, who will present the study in more detail. Thank you very much. So thank you, Malta, for the introduction, and uh, thank you to our hosts, eBay, and uh, the Fundacion Bertelsmann for helping organize this event, and uh, to the European Commission, to the government of Catalonia for the very kind words about the importance of this study on behalf of the Bertelsmann Stiftung, uh, my project, the Europe, Europe's Economy, and myself, and the co-authors, um, a lot of people. Um, I, I thank you for those kind words. Um, so we've heard a lot already about the importance of the twin transition. Uh, and, and some of the results of this study, and um, I'm gonna keep talking about those two things, but I've brought also a PowerPoint presentation, so get ready. Uh, things are about to get very exciting. Uh, so my name is Nathan Christ. I'm a project manager at the Bertelsmann Stiftung's Europe's Economy Project, uh, which focuses on regional cohesion in Europe, and I'm very pleased to present this study on behalf of the co-authors, Julia bachtrober unga Pierre-Alexander Bayand, Ron Boschma, and my colleague, Thomas Schwab, um, and as, as Malta said, I'm very excited to be doing it here in Spain because uh, when we first looked at the results, it was very clear to us that Spain was a particularly interesting case. Um, it has some clear technology forerunners in Catalonia and Madrid, but also some other regions with strong potential. So I'm grateful for the chance to share this study with you all here in Barcelona, and I have the distinct pleasure of telling a region, a very innovative region, uh, that it is doing well. So what has this study shown? Um, some of the aspects have already been discussed. Uh, first, it presents what we would call the geography of the twin transition. In other words, which regions have which techno technological capabilities expressed in patent output. Now, patent output was chosen um, as the indicator of technological capabilities. It's not a perfect indicator, uh, but it does give us a good sense of what regions are developing which specific technologies. Uh, the study then looks at the potential of regions to develop new green and te digital technologies, so it looks into the future uh, beyond the, the current playing field. Um, and it also shows which regions have developed technological capabilities through interregional collaboration. 
Finally, through an analysis of the complementarity of regional uh, technological capabilities of different regions, it shows where there is potential, untapped future potential, to develop technologies. So first here is the geography of the twin transition today, as shown in NUTS 2 regions. Uh, the green regions, let's use this laser pointer, uh, the green regions have more green than digital technologies, and the blue regions have more digital than green technologies. Um, the shade of blue or green does not reflect the number of patents, the volume of patent output, but the relative concentration of either green or digital technologies in each region. So nearly every region has what you could call some technological strengths. Uh, what this graphic doesn't show, however, uh, is the absolute strengths. Um, and, and there we detected a bit of a problem since um, these relative, these absolute strengths, excuse me, are in a relatively small number of regions. We found that the around 80% of patent output um, from the time period considered, which is 2017 to, uh, I guess I don't actually need to use this, right? 2017 to 2021 is from the most economically developed regions, um, often major cities. So this innovation divide stood out to us in the, in the results as a potential problem. Uh, so let's zoom in on Spain. Uh, so mapping, grains, uh, mapping Spain's green and digital technology. Um, here's the same graphic, uh, but for Spain's nuts two regions. And uh, you can see that Catalonia and Madrid lean towards digital technologies, along with the Balearic Islands. Um, and, most, and, and the rest of the regions have a more green than digital technological profile. Again, uh, similar to the last graphic, the shade doesn't tell you the uh, volume of, uh, or the overall strength, uh, but the relative strength within the regions. So in this next slide, uh, you can see the, the volume of patent output from the time considered. Um, Catalonia and Madrid are far greater than the rest of Spain's nuts two regions, uh, but Valenciana, Andalusia, Andalusia, and País Vasco round out the top five. Uh, the fact that Madrid and Catalonia produce the most patents uh, and have a strong concentration in digital technologies is not unusual, actually, on, the European, uh, on, on Europe as a whole. More developed regions, uh, which is portrayed here uh, in Europe, show this, uh, a very similar pattern. Um, this graphic and the next two show the future potential. So again, we've moved on from current capabilities to future potential to develop new technologies in three groups of regions more developed regions, transition regions, and less developed regions. Some of you might know what those classifications mean, others maybe not, so I'll explain. Uh, more, these are classifications in EU cohesion policy. More developed regions are above the regional average GDP per capita. Transition regions are 75% to 100% of the average, and less developed regions are below 75%. So first, here with uh, more developed regions, the highest potential uh, is in complex digital technologies up here in the right top quadrant. Uh, this chart as a whole plots the um, relatedness and uh, complexity of technologies. So relatedness is along the x-axis, complexity is along the y-axis. Um, and uh, if technological capabilities are related, um, so further along on the x-axis, there's greater potential to develop new ones in existing or similar fields. Complexity, again on the y-axis, is a measure of how easy, easy it is to replicate uh, the technologies in other places and gives some sense of how lucrative, how rewarding it is to develop these technologies uh, in a given region. So the top right quadrant is the best. The top bottom left quadrant is the worst because it has low relatedness and low complexity, um, at least for uh, future um, development of technologies, is concerned. So that was more developed regions. Now, transition regions, uh, there's a different pattern. There's strong relatedness in relatively less complex green technologies, so then the bottom right. Um, this is still not a bad place to be. It means that transition regions have leaned into green technologies like greenhouse gas capture, sustainable packaging, and biofertilizers, but have fewer strengths in complex uh, digital technologies. So they have very little in the top right quadrant um, compared to, or they have nothing in the top right quadrant compared to uh, more developed regions. Finally. Less developed regions, the potential of less developed regions, are a bit of a mixed bag. It's actually quite fascinating that all three groupings are, are quite different. On the one hand, they show some potential in complex digital technologies like AI, but also more complex, more potential in less complex green technologies similar to transition regions. Uh, here, one standout is heat pumps. So overall, the potential to develop new technologies 
are more concentrated, new digital technologies are more concentrated. So digital more concentrated. Uh, you can see this uh, in how there are more dark blue and light blue regions on this map. So you have some dark ones, some light ones, they're all mixed together. Um, whereas the green potential is more evenly distributed. You can kind of see more uniform coloring in the middle, down through Spain, uh, to show that the potential is more evenly distributed. One of the main takeaways of, st the, of the study, at least for us, um, is that uh, based on regional heterogeneity, uh, because regions have different strengths and different weaknesses, there is potential for complementary regions to collaborate to develop new technologies. Um, in an earlier work, two of the co-authors, uh, Pierre -Alex, Alex Bayond and Ron Boschma, found that linkages giving access to capabilities in other regions that complement existing capabilities in a region are, are important for the ability to diversify into new technologies. So put simply, finding complementary regions can help in the development of new technologies. If these collaborations are between regions in different development levels, the three we just uh, discussed, for example, between more developed transition and less developed regions, then the diffusion of knowledge can also help lift transition and less developed regions economically. So that's the sweet spot that Malta was talking about. You want to diffuse technology, share technology, develop new technologies while also working uh, more developed regions, working with less developed regions. Currently, most links, however, um, between regions are in the same country, which makes sense for a lot of reasons, especially linguistic, but this can be de detrimental to the, the, the goal that, we just, uh, that I just presented. Um, you can see it here in, uh, in two graphics. Um, it's a bit hard to see uh, the lines in, in the static graphs. We also have some interactive ones online. Um, uh, that the study finds a mismatch between actual uh, and potential linkages. So basically, uh, in the case of Andalusia, in the topic of virtual and augmented reality, uh, Andalusia is cooperating with other regions in Spain and also some regions outside the country. Uh, but based on the complementarity analysis within the study, uh, there are many more regions that could be beneficial for collaboration throughout Europe. So that would be the dark colored ones that are scattered about, whereas existing cooperations are here, or at least the international ones. So, Finally, uh, in this graph, uh, we look at the untapped potential uh, between regions shown with the yellow-orange lines uh, being the untapped potential for international, interregional, so between regions uh, across country borders. This untapped potential could be useful to guide EU plans like uh, smart specialization, uh, partnerships for regional innovation, and other EU actions. Um, and there are indeed many, already many interregional cooperation programs like Interreg, but a challenge is often finding the right complementary region. So this study provides, I hope, new information to help regions do so. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, these graphics, both in the publication and here on the screen, uh, with for untapped potential, are pretty hard to discern. But we have an interactive online version on our blog, globaleurope.eu, um, where you can hover over the lines and see exactly where they go um, with both existing and untapped um, linkages. Finally, a brief summary. There is strong heterogeneity across regions uh, in twin, tra twin, twin transition technologies. Regions may not know which regions face similar challenges and have similar opportunities. This, is, this data provided in the study is one way to help them uh, find that out. There is a strong risk of increased inequality between EU regions in the area of twin transition because of the innovation divide, supporting the technological prioritization efforts of less developed regions, so finding ways to support less developed regions develop um, twin transition technologies can help with this. And there's a very strong national bias in interregional collaborations currently, which means there's a lot of untapped potential in international, interregional cooperation that can possibly help with EU cohesion. So thank you very much for your attention, and I look forward to the discussion. Many thanks, um, Nate, um, for this um, interesting and timely uh, topic. It's a priority for Europe, as we've heard uh, before, a priority for the Spanish government, and also a priority for the um, Catalan government, as we heard um, with the um, minister. Um, the twin transition has many uh, implications, as we've heard. It has economic implications. Uh, the more advanced 
regions might continue in the leading positions and becoming poles of attraction and progress. And it has social implications also uh, because the less advanced uh, regions might continue potentially if things are not uh, developed to be behind. It has labor implications, as um, our director, Clara Basol, said before. Um, there's a labor, there might be labor mismatches, um, which um, companies are not finding the right uh, people or enough people in these and many other fields of expertise. Education, as I said uh, now, and policy implications. As you can see, the twin transition um, is a transversal issue and affects a remarkable number of policy areas, economy, social inclusion, social cohesion, education, labor, and many others. Um, we have now, we are moving on to the, uh, the debate. We'll have now a debate with two um, experts in the field uh, to discuss about the study, and then we'll open the floor for um, any questions that you might have. So I'd like to uh, call to the stage um, Aina Gallego, Associate Professor at uh, Universitat de Barcelona and uh, at eBay also, and Andrea Noferini, um, um, Academic Director at SAE. Please, if you can join me at the um, stage. And I forgot Nate, of course. He's the presenter of the, the report. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start, um, well, first thanking uh, Nate for, Nathan for the, for the uh, clarification of the report. Um, one, one of the questions that I'd like to pose um, to you, um, um, having read the study um, and the presentation, what do you think um, are the main challenges uh, of the twin transitions after having heard the, the presentation? We may start with um, Aina. Um, there are a number of challenges. So first, as the study shows and, and has been uh, mentioned, there's great variation across space in the capacity of regions to innovate. And one of the most important challenges is equalizing regions that are pioneers in the knowledge economy with regions that are left behind. The study does makes a, a great contribution by geographically mapping where innovation in digital and green te technologies is happening in Europe it would be helpful to understand the factors that predict variation in the capacity of regions to generate patents. So uh, <coughs> if that would help produce policy recommendations uh, about how to support left behind regions. And the study provides a first step uh, to do this more explanatory work. So uh, a second challenge uh, is what is the role of public policy? in generating innovation. So should markets and companies be supported to innovate in the direction that they see fit? Or should governments try to steer innovation towards some more environmental uh, and socially uh, relevant goals? Um, and how successful are, are they at that? And in this sense, it would be very helpful uh, to extend this work um, distinguishing between pat patents that are filed by firms and, and those that are filed by other organizations and universities to see like where is this uh, innovation coming from. So a third challenge to me is how to measure if we are going in the right direction. And here is where, uh, like in this study, it, they, um, uh, it equalizes uh, the green transition and digital transition with innovation and filing patents. And this is a bit problematic because patents are relevant uh, to identify innovation. Uh, but in many domains, what is relevant is the adoption of actual technology. So when you need to isolate buildings, it's not relevant if you do it with a new technology or an innovation. So you just need to do it. No? And in this sense, um, it would be like uh, uh, very interesting to see um, if the, for instance, the relationship between innovations in the green uh, in the green transition and uh, reductions in emissions per person. No? So uh, are these innovations being helpful uh, for those goals? And my fourth point is maybe it's the most um, maybe unpopular or critical, but I, I, I'd like to, to problematize the frame about the twin transitions. We were talking before, it's unclear where this frame comes from. 
Uh, there's, uh, to me, no doubt that the green transition is necessary. But I, I will argue that um, uh, for social co cohesion, um, accelerating any type of digitalization may be problematic. Um, so more and more research in, in economics is questioning the view that digitalization, and particularly AI, uh, produces uh, economic growth that will benefit all society. So we know that digitalization has been the main cause of rising income inequalities since the 1970s. There's actually a, a lot of research about that. Uh, because digital technologies have created new well-paying jobs, but they also destroyed uh, many uh, jobs of routine workers and led to a hollowing in the, of the middle class also in European countries. And now with AI, like this hollowing uh, like is uh, taking uh, place um, for, or may take place for more skilled workers. So the general policy advice in Europe is uh, retraining, and I agree with the points made by Clara Basols. Um, and, uh, but but we, we are finding that how to retrain workers, it's not straightforward. For instance, on these routine workers um, that were displaced by robots or other machines, what we find is that um, many of these displaced workers exited the labor force through retirement, but uh, it, like, uh, it was very difficult to retrain them. And so to be specific, I think that the danger with a very accelerated digital transition is that it can con continue a process of concentration of economic and political power in the hands of a few large companies. And, and so any type of... Uh, uh, acceleration of digitalization is not necessarily beneficial. In the case of generative AI, uh, which uh, it's the, the technology that we've, uh, like in the last year, has been more um, in the spotlight, uh, it is a, a technology that has strong economies of scale. Um, and it leads to market concentration because training uh, language models, it's very expensive, then using them, like the marginal cost is very low. So this, this creates uh, some tendencies and it is a technology that is very focused on, on automation. Uh, um, so the risk of rapid labor market change is real and I think it's very important. And a final point, so that the environmental costs of the digital transition need to be studied in a bit more detail. So for instance, in the case of Catalonia, like it's considered a success that we have large data centers, um, but cooling down these large data centers, it's difficult if temperatures rise and it requires a lot of water. So seeing the connection between those. So to sum up, I'm, I'm persuaded we need the digital transition, but it's a bit less clear to me that, um, <coughs> that the digital transition needs to be supported so actively and, and critically, so in a, any type. So uh, focusing on, on technologies that complement workers, yes, but maybe substituting workers fast, it poses a danger, and, and uh, not uh, giving subsidies uh, to large uh, companies. Thank you, Aina. Um, some of the questions uh, will be, uh, might be um, answered um, or debated, discussed um, afterwards, because we have some private um, uh, business associations here at the floor, so the, the floor will be opened uh, for you uh, to discuss uh, some, some questions. Um, Andrea, would you like to also comment on the, on the main challenges or any, any comment on what Aina just uh, mentioned? Um, yes, many thanks uh, uh, for the invitation, first of all. Um, challenges are, 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 are many. Um, because the issue is, uh, is, is a complex one, it's one of the so-called wicked, uh, wicked problems, no? Um, to the question of how to, one of the points uh, that you uh, stress in the, in the, in the report is uh, uh, related to inter-regional uh, uh, collaboration, no? How, how regions can uh, collaborate uh, among this, th themselves. So when, when I was reading the, the report, uh, I went through I try to, to, to bring the, the analysis to what I, I know a little bit uh, uh, more, and is uh, territorial uh, uh, cooperation 
in, in the EU, as you, many of you already know, no? the territorial cooperation, territorial cohesion is uh, since 2007 is one of the objectives of uh, uh, the big you know, framework of the EU cohesion policy. Uh, territorial disparities across EU regions and EU cities are pretty pronounced. No? There are still uh, uh, five times difference between a European that live in a rural uh, Hungary or in the south of Italy and someone that live in the continental Rich, uh, rich Europe. So I think that uh, the, the, um, the report is, is, is very salient for, 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 the, for the question that it, uh, it addresses is because uh, this, this transition that is very urgent, that is needed you know, in the light of sustainability, can have some social impact uh, by increasing divergence or increasing uh, territorial disparities. No? The 2030 Agenda uh, warns about the, uh, leaving no one uh, behind and the territorial cohesion uh, 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 warns about uh, disparities that uh, do not work well no, for the process of uh, 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 European integration. So I went through uh, territorial um, uh, cooperation and as you know the, the regional ministries mentioned the four motors uh, for Europe that has a very large uh, uh, history, more than three, three, three decades. Catalonia, I think uh, that you choose uh, a, a right territory because uh, Catalonia a regional government is involved in the three main uh, streams of territorial uh, cooperation. We have an example of interregional cooperation with the four motors. We have an example of cross-border cooperation with the EPM, the, U the, the, the Euro region Pyrenees Mediterranean. And then we have even an example, incipient uh, uh, um, experience in uh, transnational cooperation that is the, this idea of a macro region. No? So I think that uh, uh, the, uh, there are lots of attempts in trying to, to find what is the right scale in order to, to address this problem. So uh, what, uh, what, I, uh, what are the problems in, in uh, uh, making uh, regions uh, cooperate among themselves? There are lots of problems and there are lots of great experiences, uh, lots of uh, uh, successes, but some of the most common problems uh, uh, have to do with uh, uh, differences that uh, we have uh, uh, among, for example, regional governments. Uh, capacities uh, in terms of resources, in terms of administrative capacities, and in terms also in uh, in terms of uh, cultural uh, cultural uh, 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 administrative uh, in terms of administrative culture. No, so what uh, the lesson that uh, we drawn from uh, experiences in uh, in some of these uh, um, cross border, inter regional, or transnational, probably is more known uh, under the label of interreg A, B, C, D, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is a program that has uh, more than three decades of, uh, of 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 life in 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 the European Union, and that is uh, a successful uh, uh, program. Um, the, the 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 main issues are how to. Uh, find the right incentives uh, for uh, uh, regional governments to, 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 to increase their, uh, their cooperation, starting from the point that uh, sometimes uh, needed uh, or uh, uh, problems are uh, territorially located. No? So uh, uh, governments, they, they do have, regional governments, they do have different preferences. So the first point is how to um, enhance uh, uh, cooperation typologies of cooperation uh, you mentioned interregional but i will i would also explore cross border because it's it's closer no uh, it would be interesting i did not have time but i would do definitely to 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 to, to look at the complementarity the technological technological complementarity across the border eh? um, the other the other point is how to involve the other actors, economists, they do use these uh, complex frameworks or the triple, quadruple, and, and even uh, five helix models, no? in which uh, regional innovation systems are characterized by different actors, firms, regional governments, civic society, society association, and academia. So in your, in your uh, report, you mention, you basically, your unit of uh, analysis uh, uh, patents, uh, I think that patents uh, 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 cover the part of uh, firms, we could include some, uh, some uh, uh, university too, then I think that we must explore you know, what are the enabling conditions for uh, 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 regional innovation systems to, 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 to be created they are there where they are not uh, already in place and to, to be fostered and, uh, and uh, improve uh, where, uh, where uh, they are already in place. I think that's uh, basically the last point. No? As you, we all know, we shouldn't reinvent the wheel again 
the, the point is uh, fine, and I think that European integration, uh, the, the European Union programs, they 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 can uh, uh, they always serve no, as an, uh, a nice carrot, uh, a, 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 war, a reward that can be used in order to increase these. Uh, these uh, alliances, alliances again, one of the SDG uh, uh, that is uh, uh, this our, our framework. So the main aspect is uh, uh, starting from this very important uh, mapping, uh, how to use this uh, this map in order to provide the right uh, uh, the right incentives. Thank I will stop here. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, it's it's very important we just what you just said how to use this uh, map um, to just not leave it into research but to um, transform it into tangible uh, and also to communicate it to um, firms companies um, <coughs> governments associations there is one striking um, statement that um, was in their report that I found uh, in 2023 quite striking which states that much of the research infrastructure of, in Europe remains remains um, organized on a national scale, while research, innovation, and green policies are often uncoordinated uh, between European member states. So um, as, as uh, Nathan said, uh, there's a lot of untapped potential. And you were talking about um, the multi-stakeholder, the importance of not researchers, you as main researchers are not only, do not only focus on research, but also reach out to firms, companies, you both, um, um, insisted on the importance of, of this. I don't know if, uh, Nathan, you'd like to comment <coughs> on anything in particular? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you very much for the feedback. Um, I think the best part about something like this is to hear about perceptions of the research in a, in a more local context. It makes it more real, um, and, I, and I really appreciate you both taking a look at the study and providing feedback. One thing um, that, uh, yeah, I can comment on is um, this idea of, yes, there are many existing programs, um, and I would say there seems like there's a, a new one every week uh, for interregional cooperation, and that is a fantastic thing at the, uh, coming out of, uh, out of the EU. But um, I was just at the uh, EU Week of Regions and Cities in Brussels, and one thing uh, that I heard from practitioners coming from regions, local authorities focused on regional development, is that in order to use these instruments, um, it's someone upon them to find out uh, the good match Right? There's resources to, to do that um, available, but we hope that this study contributes in some way um, to people looking for the right match for their region. Um, and, and, one, and one thing that was said was um, the more they find out about other regions, uh, the less similar they actually seem. So if, they, if, if it, at first glance you might find a, a complementary region um, in another EU member state, uh, the more you learn about them, the more you find out that the, in, the, in the case of many, many small differences, you say, well, you know what, in the end, we have some similar challenges and opportunities, but wow, we're quite different. Maybe it's in a governance culture, maybe it's a local governance capacities. And um, this study doesn't solve that, but it provides another criteria for regions to um, look outward and, and hopefully find some fruitful collaboration. Right. Um, thank you very much. Um, now, I think it's, um, if you don't have any other uh, comment or issue, it's time to open the, the floor to um, the uh, audience here, because we have business uh, uh, associations, um, institutions, European Commission, government, uh, governments, uh, and um, businesses. Uh, so um, we'd like to uh, now open up the discussion to you. Any question on the, or any comment, any discussion, or any reflection on the things that have been uh, discussed here uh, right now. Don't be shy. Yeah, there's one. Yeah. <laughs> right, um, it's, uh, she's uh, right in the middle, um, right here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Immaculada Ranera. I don't tend to be shy, uh, so okay, let's open. Do you think that those differences between regions, cultural differences, political differences, blah, 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 in this increasingly challenging situation that we are facing now, do you think that regions and countries will be able to overcome 
those differences? Because that's like the eternal discussion. I mean, it has always been like that for a long, long period of time. So are you positive, generally speaking, that there are ways to overcome those differences and then to enhance, enhance sorry, this, this cooperation between regions and countries? That's a very broad question. That who um, who would like to just? Um, it's not, of course, it's not based on the study, but we can all uh, discuss on your personal um, experience and research, past uh, research. Um. I I start. Uh, I don't. I mean, this is a very interesting but uh, complex uh, question for which I don't have any definitive answer. Uh, but uh, what what? Uh, has been proven is that uh, regional uh, uh, governments and even uh, you mentioned local uh, local governments, cities, uh, uh, they are very smart. They they can be very creative uh, 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 when when they have the, when they share the same problems. We have example, and and I, I particularly like uh, I don't like part of my job, but part of this research is very interesting because is. Uh, uh, territorial cooperation is really where you see European integration uh, at stake, when you see uh, the, 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 the problems and the solutions. So in the case of cross-border, interregional, transnational cooperation, we have seen, for example, city halls or regional ministries uh, uh, or, or technicians, of course, um, working on the same issue. For example, uh, I don't know, uh, coastal uh, tourism or uh, waste, uh, waste reduction uh, by cooperating uh, uh, outside the, the, the framework of national domestic policies. And this is pretty new, not today, but it was uh, 20 years ago, no? So I think that the nature and the urgency, the salience of the problem is what can uh, uh, make uh, technicians, uh, make policy makers, and many other uh, stakeholders creative in finding solutions that usually were, were found at the domestic level and in the, in the vertical uh, 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 um, hierarchical way. No? The, the regional minister mentioned multi-level governance. Um, it's one, uh, one month or whatever, everything came in. But I think uh, it, it, the problem is what uh, can move uh, uh, actors. Aina, would you like to comment on that? I'm totally <coughs> optimistic about this question. So on one hand, uh, inequalities globally have been closing be between countries, suggesting that there's quite a, a lot of capacity to catch up. I think a, a study like this is, is very interesting because it also helps identify overperformers. So, uh, like, the, it's very interesting, uh, like Andalusia, in, uh, as, as was shown, no? in, in some domains. And it is helpful to identify, try to see what are the good practices uh, that are being done in these domains. And a lot of the time, it's just that good ideas travel fast and uh, helping do these bonds between region can uh, really help. Thank you. Um, any any question? Yeah, there is one question out there. There's always breaking the ice is always uh, the problem. Then it's better. Thank you. Hello, my name is David Esprit. I'm GT Workers Union, and we have uh, listening about uh, workers or retraining, but uh, we don't listen about uh, what is going to evolve to the people that's going to left behind. What is going to happen to, because we hear about new technologies, new developments, what is going to happen to the workers that are not going to be able to come over or to change or to transition? Uh, what tools, what means do you need to have to be addressed? Um, that's more of a, a political question and uh, then um, more related to the study, that which um, I don't know if you have the um, the guts <laughs> to reply to that. That's problematic. Uh, let me uh, if you want, let me um, just go ahead and then you can pick it pick it up. <laughs> yeah, um, that's uh, problematic, but um, it's uh, training. What uh, Clara Basol, the director of the Fundacion here, uh, mentioned before, uh, it's training. The educational system must uh, <coughs> adapt to the reality, it cannot work as it used to work in the past. It needs to adapt fast. Otherwise, uh, there's a lot of um, unfilled of, um, jobs um, 
out there that the young people are not so young and it's retraining all the time. And then it's social inclusion um, and policies need, need, need to be uh, implemented. Otherwise, um, we might have a, the gap might widen. Uh, there's no solution. It's, it's a political solution. It depends on where tax people's money, our money goes, uh, and how, where it's invested. So um, it's, I don't think we have the uh, magic uh, solution or the answer, but I would say education, that's first of all, uh, and most important, and to the more senior um, staff is retraining and also um, so, so, social um, inclusion uh, policies. I don't know if you'd like to uh, elaborate on that, uh, Nathan. Yeah, I think it's, it's a very important point, and um, part of our part of the the takeaways from the study was that one there is an innovation divide and that a lot of the the innovation a lot of the patent output as as we discovered was in a small number of already well developed places um, so that's a problem for regional disparities now also on the on the personal human level um, the digital transition and the green transition pose problems for uh, people who are in uh, in um, jobs that are vulnerable to digitalization or jobs that are vulnerable to decarbonization. And uh, a very, very important part of cohesion policy is and, and should remain the social aspect um, because you can't uh, keep regions from falling behind if you're not keeping the people <laughs> in those regions from falling behind. So um, I would say that this study is part of uh, our work linking <laughs> uh, the twin transition to cohesion and showing that uh, there are challenges, but there are also opportunities. So if you're not doing something to help the challenges, then you, um, then taking advantage of the opportunities is going to have the wrong effect. Um, so you have to, to look at both. So um, it's called a twin transition. We already talked about how that's a bit of a problematic uh, phrasing. Um, it's, it should uh, encompass not just the digital, the green, but also the social. No, thank you. I know you wanted to also uh, comment on that. Yes, I think that uh, the most critical question, thanks for asking it, um, there, there are a number of policies that can help. So uh, the point I was being critical about on the digital transition, uh, if you see it long term, um, as digitalization has advanced, uh, the, the labor share on total income has been declining. And, and this is because like uh, more of the income is going to companies and particularly big tech uh, companies. Or if we see the, the last year in the stock markets and so on, it really has been uh, like a, a lot of gains have been concentrated on, on very few companies. <coughs> and, and I think the EU is taking the right uh, direction in, in passing legislation that is anti-monopoly, anti-trust and so on, but this needs to be implemented. Um, and that will help people. Um, then adjusting tax codes to, to AI and uh, maybe giving less fiscal incentives to um, apply algorithms and, uh, which are directed at, uh, many of them are directed at substituting workers, but equalizing the tax code so that workers do not pay much more. Um, and, and that's hard, but uh, there are proposals in this direction. Then giving people more say, um, unions, and we have many examples of uh, cases like Germany where the adoption, for instance, of robots was, more, was negotiated with uh, trade unions, and it led to better outcomes for workers and, um, and prevented a backlash against the radical right. So there are experiences. And then, of course, retraining and workforce development. But I would add that it needs to be done in, in companies, so incentivizing companies to keep their existing workers and so not uh, fire them, and, and, um, uh, but investing in, in skills in companies. Thank you. Um, yeah, there is one uh, question um, here on the second row. Yeah, thank you. If you could um, introduce yourself, that would be uh, fantastic. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, I found the presentation very interesting, but I would like to inject two, two questions or, or three questions to you. Uh, let, me st let me start by, by one statement that maybe you agree or maybe not. Um, this activity has to be based on 
public and private collaboration. It's not a question of the private industries, neither of the governments only. The second question is um, the transfer of technology is based through persons. So if you want to improve the transfer of technology, you, has, you have to promote the, the, the movement or the, or the travel of the persons from one place to another. Um, the third point, and now I am starting the questions, uh, there is public money in the European Union, various programs based on green and, of course, digital. Uh, this public money, which is subsidies or loans, can be placed and can incentivate the collaboration of public and private institutions, or private and private institutions from different, from different uh, member states. Um, if that is the case, this is an important tool to transfer technology from one place to another. The third question is that uh, according to the organization of funds for research and development, this is, this is based mainly in the European Union, not on regionals, but on states. There are the states who have the money, or the important money, most of the important money, that can be used in, in programs. And you don't mention that. I would like some comments about that. And uh, if we agree that this has to be based on a collaboration between uh, public and private companies uh, that provide um, new products and services, the question is that there is a way to do that, to promote that. The ones that have the technology and the ones that do not have the technology. The ones that have the technology have an interest in the market, trying to sell that to other places. The ones that do not have the technology, they are interested in the collaboration because that is going to mean an acquisition of technology, an improvement. Uh, and final, uh, these are questions that, or statements that are making, I'm not sure about that at all, but I would like to, to comment. To me, the basis has to be the private company, not the, pub, the public institutions. We are talking about technology. We are not talking about science. You are, we are talking about applications. This is linked to market and to benefits into the market. And this is the business of private companies, not public institutions. So the leadership of that to happen has to be private companies. And final, I do believe that the European Union is too much worried about uh, preserving the internal market, which is very good, but this has a neg negative effect whenever the private European companies have to compete in the world. Because <coughs> if you are prevented from growing and you have to compete with Chinese and American companies in the world, you are preventing the European companies to become uh, competitive. Thank you. Um, Could you comment about that? Thank um, you. Um, and your name was? And your company? My, my name is, is uh, Joachim Coelho. I am chairman of a company based on digital design, digital, chi digital chips uh, design called OpeChip. Thank you. Um, any, any comment on what um, Mr. Coelho has, has said? I took one of the major um, the question, one of the major questions there to be, uh, what's, what's the incentives for regions of different technological capabilities to cooperate? That is a very good question and one of the biggest ones um, for the study. It's, um, the, the, the authors would say, and they, they tried to show this in the study, that if you find that right complementarity, there's going to be some incentive for both sides. But if you're talking about a region that excels in a highly complex digital technology, there's not going to be a lot of incentive for them to cooperate. The actors, since we're talking about who specifically, not the regions, the actors, the um, uh, private entities, the public entities, to enter into collaborations with um, counterparts in other regions um, if they don't have complementary capabilities, which are harder uh, for, for if they're more complex and there's a, there's a, a bigger divide in the, in the complexity of their technologies. So 
I think for, for the most advanced cutting edge things, um, that's a really tall order. Um, for the green technologies that are less complex uh, and for which the, the technological concentration is more divided across mm -hmm. Europe, there could be more potential. There could be more incentives for both sides. Um, but uh, it's gonna be on a tech-by-tech uh, -tech basis um, and it's gonna depend a lot on yeah, that, uh, that, uh, the value for, for both partners for them to enter into that. So what the study does is present uh, those complement complementarities, uh, but yes, providing the incentives for regions, for actors within regions to cooperate um, is, is the next step, uh, and that depends on a lot of other things. Um, I know, yeah, Andrea, yeah. I will start with the easiest of your questions regarding, for example, uh, how are this money, this public money you mentioned, uh, um, deliver or, or manage? No, you mentioned the, 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 the great role of state, and I think uh, the regions uh, are very concerned uh, or, or they have very, very clear that uh, uh, this money should be decentralized, territorialized, and until uh, the last crisis is in these new funds that uh, went out of the standard uh, framework, the multinational framework. Uh, cohesion, po cohesion policies are a great example of uh, decentralization. Of course, and always we can improve, but I think that uh, regions do have the control of a big part of this money. And this uh, literature says that uh, has, has increased effectiveness in the use of, the, of this money. Uh, this was the easiest of the question. Regarding, uh, regarding uh, the other question, I will address only one point. You mentioned PPPs, uh, public-private partnership. I agree with you in the first, uh, in the first moment when you mentioned that uh, given that we are dealing with technology, companies uh, are, are, are the leading actors. I, 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 I can agree with you no? in the technological field. Uh, we need, uh, we need uh, the, the, the role of uh, of, uh, of companies where they, they have the knowledge, the, the resources, the ability and the incentives to, 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 to develop, to create new, new technologies. But uh, uh, technology or patents, they do not automatically transform in innovation. And so I think that here I, there's, there's a room for, uh, for collaboration. There's a huge literature on public-public partnerships. Some of these uh, were very successful, some of these were, uh, were uh, not really easy, successful. No? So it depends on, on, on the structure. I think that, uh, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, you know, regional innovation systems are complex networks of actors in which uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, each one of them, they, had, they have a role. But the point is how to find uh, the, the, the convenient, uh, the, the, the good dynamics in order to, 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 to maintain this role. Eh? Companies for profits, uh, governments for, uh, for uh, the interest of, uh, of the people, civil society, society for some groups, and academia. Okay, we are in a university, so academia is part also of this technological transfer. We have a great example of uh, connection. Everything can be improved between companies and, 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 and academia. Um, like to about <coughs> anything or? Yes, very briefly. Uh, so I, I agree, and there's a role for markets, there's a role for governments uh, in making sure that there's uh, like public goods are not underprovided and taking care of externalities. So like everyone has their um, a place and. Uh, um, but I, I think the, you mentioned one of like the big elephant in the room in many of these uh, debates, which is China. And um, so uh, both for the green transition and, and the digital transition, that like, it's a very important consideration. At some point, we'll need to go into um, international institutions or pact or um, I, I don't know how this is going to happen, but that's uh, like uh, losing out to international competition is one of the main drawbacks, yeah. Thank you. Um, just, we have time for one more question. Um, yeah, there's one question here and we will uh, wrap up. Yeah. Um, thank you very much uh, for the exposition and the presentation. My name is Francesc. I'm part of uh, Equipe Europa, a youth association. 
where we basically represent the youth boys of the European values in Catalonia. And my question is related to this. Maybe it's more related for policymakers. But how can regions work to ensure that young people have a meaningful role in decision-making processes related to the digital and green transition? So what mechanisms or um, initiatives can be put in place to empower youth in this regard? Thank you so much. Youth speaking out, so that's important. Youth, young voices, um, any, any comment? No? Don't have any specific. I, well, it's very, um, youth is always important. If you want, uh, as a token, as an example, at the Fundación Bertelsmann, this is not about the green and digital transition, but we are um, developing a project, especially on empowering uh, young voices on dual vet, on the importance of um, education and dual vet, so, um, so that politicians um, listen to the young people. That's very important, because if we deliver um, policies for them, addressed to them, uh, at least you need to hear uh, what they uh, think about, about that. So I think that's key, but not only in the green and digital transi transition, but in any uh, policy, because um, it's, it's more legitimate and, and you empower um, not only the, um, the future of the society, because society is everybody, but you empower the new voices, uh, the new approaches and new um, ways of thinking and, and uh, believing. Um, that's, but that's just a, a small uh, comment uh, using our small experiences at the Fundación that we're developing a small project on, 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 on that, on empowering the young voices of, of, of people. I don't know if you'd like to um, elaborate a bit on, not on that project, but on, on any other issues related to youth. Because we wanted a youth people and the youth uh, voices also to be present and here in the in the audience on, on, on Europe. A small comment is that young people vote less than other population groups. That's a problem for empowerment. It's not, but I, uh, like I, I think that's an important challenge because now there's a, a lot of evidence of bias towards policies towards the interest of older people, but because they vote much more. So maybe part of it, it's about activating. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you don't have any other um, comments, um, just on behalf of the, all the um, organizers, the Bertelsmann Stiftung, my colleagues from, from um, Germany, on behalf of um, the uh, eBay, Institut uh, Barcelona Studies Internationales, Fundación Bertelsmann, and also the um, European Commission here in Barcelona, thank you very much for um, being here. And the organizers would like to, would like to um, invite you to a, a small uh, cocktail um, outset. Thank you very much. <laughs>